All right, Algebra 1, here we go. 7, 4, multiplication properties of exponents. Our essential question today, why should you use properties of exponents to simplify a power raised to a power or a product raised to a power? Okay, it's just following in line with these properties, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, so we don't have so many rules that we got, you know, if this, if that, this is just the way it is. Um, starting off with you raising a power to a power, okay? Multiplying exponents. When you take a base raised to a power and you raise it to a power, what you're doing is multiplying the exponents. That's the shortcut. Because remember, this would just be a to the m times a to the m times a to the m n times. So if n was 3, you notice here we'd have m times m times m. That would be 3m's. So if it was raised to the third power, that's what it would look like. Well, that's just shortcut. You're just multiplying the 3 and the m. So that's why the property works there. Some examples of it, 5 to the 4th power raised to the 2nd power, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 to the 8th power. m to the 3rd power raised to the 5th power, 3 times 5 is 15. So it's m to the 15th. n to the 4th times 7, 4 times 7 is 28. Even if it's negative, same deal. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. We don't like a negative exponent, so we flip it, put p to the 20th in the denominator, so you get 1 over p to the 20th. Remember, you do exponents first before you multiply. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So you're going to take 5 times negative 2 and get negative 10. Now when we, uh, we can take this and put it in the denominator, or you could just take, we're multiplying these two common base, you're going to get negative 7. Either way, you get uh, 1 over y to the 7th, because we don't want a negative 7. If you just added those two there, it would be that. Or 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Either way, both of these give you y to the negative 7. We flip it, because we don't want a negative in the exponent. Okay? So anytime an exponent is raised to an exponent, multiply the two exponents. Let's look at some more examples. Raising a product to a power, okay? Remember, we don't show it here, but there's a 1 right here. So they're both being, being raised to a power, both 1s. So 1 times n, 1 times n, you're going to get a to the n, b to the n. So when you're raising a product, two numbers being multiplied together to a power, just multiply each of their respective exponents. So this one right here, again, there's a 1 right there, we just don't put it. So this will be 3 to the 4th, x to the 4th, and I can simplify it. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, x to the 4th. Okay, big mistake, people just keep that as 3, and they'll get 3x to the 4th. Because it's inside with it, you've got to multiply both those exponents. Same thing here, there's an exponent there. So 5, 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 25x to the 6th, 5 squared is 25. 7 to the 3rd power, 1 times 3, 9 times 3 is 27, m to the 27th. 7 times 7 is 49, times 7 is 343, m to the 27th. Even the negative exponents, 1 and 1, so I'm going to get 2 to the negative 4th, z to the negative fourth, that's 1 over 2 to the fourth, z to the fourth, and I can simplify that down, 16 z to the fourth. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Okay? So raising a power to a power, you multiply the exponents, and if you've got a product of them here, make sure you distribute it to both of them, okay, when you multiply there. And then simplify like we've been simplifying. Okay, we don't like negative exponents. Uh, if you can square or cube or take to the fourth uh, a number, go ahead and do that. Okay, so we'll look at some more of that, some more applications of it, and some uh, do some uh, problem solving, and we'll get after that tomorrow. All right, see you then. Bye.